they came in in 2017, pulled a permit to build a fence and put in a uh, slab of concrete. They were not required to come back and pull a building permit for the actual site itself, the uh, container uh, that they put all the lithium ion batteries in. So they complied with the code as it was, but they didn't have to notify us other than they pulled a permit to build a fence and uh, put a slab down. That was it. And so we did not know what that building was or what it contained. And had no idea that it was even there. No. I mean, other than like, there's a box there. I knew it was there. As far as the city, the city didn't know it was there. And I knew it was there, but it was un, unassuming. You didn't think it, you know, if somebody builds, if they came in and built a, you know, a big building, you know, oh, well, I'm going to go look at that building and check out the construction. But when it's just a metal box. I and mean, it just had a, a danger electricity, small little six by eight sign on the uh, gate. And that was the end of it. So not to go off on too much of a tangent, but who's responsible for knowing uh, when they're building that or is, aren't there permits and codes involved and things like that, that maybe outside of the fire, but as far as building code goes, that that would force no, they, them to make someone aware, at least at some level somewhere. No, uh, at, at that point in time, the answer is no, there was uh, nothing in there. And uh fire marshal Tanner can uh, talk to that. They only had to pull the permit to build the fence and put the concrete slab down. And that was the extent of it from both the building code and the fire code. From the fire code standpoint, that, that, that's it. Fire did do a plan review on it for a fence and a pad. It's a pretty remote area. Uh, there's a major highway that runs uh, in, in relatively close to it and uh, another kind of side road that, that comes off to the side. But it, it's in a relatively uh, remote part of the, of the city. Uh, there, there's hundreds of people that drive by it every day. It's like it's just part of the of the substation. You know, it's the electric utility. We have uh, uh, a lot of utility uh, here in the valley, so we're used to seeing them. And it's just just an assumption. Well, it's just part of the utility, which which to be honest with you, we don't want any part of. <laughs> you know, uh, that's that's not our scope. So I would say after after the incident. Um, the question came out, well, uh, th there was a reference to a sister uh, facility. And so then at that point, we knew, well, there's there's other installations in the valley. So um, we asked the question, well, where where are those locations associated with uh, uh, with APS or Arizona Public Service? And um, they, they were uh, forthright and, and gave us... Uh, response at that time gave us response information for them, the locations and we were kind of the conduit to, to disseminate that to our our neighboring jurisdictions but again we're part of that auto aid consortium it was interesting uh, just just before the incident there was a, a convention uh, energy uh, convention in uh, in phoenix and they actually toured uh one of the one of the sideline tours was one of those uh battery energy storage units. And again, this is a walk-in uh, unit. But, and the racks are much like computer racks, and they're just full of modules, which are full of batteries, and it's environmentally controlled. But, you know, it's, uh, for all practical purposes, a state-of-the-art in a 2012 code standpoint. So we know how fast technology changes, and that, that was the problem. Technology uh, outchanged the fire code. I've always heard the technology is... 10 years ahead of what it is commercially for us right now, right? Like they've already developed, they know what they're selling to us next, man. How advantageous would it be if we could have access to these prototypes and developments of what's coming down the pike? Since, since the incident, we've been involved with, uh, with several organizations. We were there at the university of Texas at their fire research, uh, center. Um, gosh, that's been, I think about a year ago where they were doing testing, uh, some large scale testing. It all has to do with emerging changes in technology, particularly with battery chemistry. And, and we don't know, I mean, we, we know about wind, we know about solar to, to a good degree, but uh, when it comes to the storage, that's the issue. And so as they find different chemistries and different ways to absorb that energy and, and efficiently transfer it back out when they need to, 
that's going to be the hard part is keeping up with that from a fire protection standpoint. So, so again, you go back to, well, what can we mitigate? We can mitigate the explosion. We can, we can detect the gas and respond accordingly. In, in this one, we, we just had blinders. We had no idea. We could monitor the perimeter, and they did a great job of that. And, and for all practical purposes, the temperatures are down, the gases are down. Hey, it's safe to go in, fellas. 